Chapter 9. Education. I have never let my schooling interfere with my education. Mark Twain. I began my schooling by attending kindergarten and first grade at private schools before our family moved to a nearby town where I enrolled in the public school system from which I graduated. I could tell at that young age that something wasn't quite right because things I began learning in first grade, specifically cursive handwriting, I wasn't being taught until near the end of second grade at the new school. I would later find out that government-funded public schooling was a recent development in society. The government-run school system we know today began in Prussia in the late 18th century and was brought to the United States by Horace Mann, then secretary of the Massachusetts Board of Education, who toured German schools in 1843 and brought those ideas back to the United States. Mary Ruart wrote in Healing Our World, early in our country's history, Americans were considered to be among the most literate people in the world. Schooling was neither compulsory nor free, although private charity schools provided education to those too poor to afford formal instruction. Licensing requirements for teachers and schools were almost non-existent. The diverse education available in the United States greatly pleased the immigrants who came from societies where their children could not go to school that taught the values they cherished. Some influential citizens, however, felt that society was disrupted rather than enriched by the different perspectives and faiths that the immigrants brought with them. With a uniform system of American education, they could mold children into what they perceived as proper citizens. Public schools do not exist to educate children. Rather, these schools exist to mold children into replicas of one another. One young man with a vision of breaking that mold is a young man by the name of Eric Finman. In 2014, it came to light that he made a six-figure profit on a Bitcoin investment and then opened his own business. In 2012, Finman received $1,000 from his grandmother and invested it in Bitcoin. Nearly 18 months later, he sold his investment for $100,000 and used the earnings to launch Botangle.com, an online tutoring service that runs on video chat. In a Reddit AMA, he said, I'm Eric Finman, a 15-year-old entrepreneur from Idaho. I owe a lot to my older brother. He told me about Bitcoin and helped me get started with 0.2 Bitcoins that he gave me. And my grandmother, just out of the blue, gave me a $1,000 check for Easter. And I just said, screw it, let's buy Bitcoins with this money so I can trump my brother and how many Bitcoins he had at the time. Adding, with my earnings, I decided to address some of the negative experiences I had in the education system. Tutoring that is focused and student-centric and engages students in ways responsive to needs and available technology became my passion. Finman said he didn't think of Boatangle as a company when he first started the site. Rather, he simply wanted a better learning experience than he was getting from his school. He now manages a 20-person team of programmers, designers, and animators, and other professionals from all over the world, not including the experts who teach classes on the site. During the AMA, he said, I am generating money, just not profit. Though I'm fairly certain things will soon change for this young man who has big dreams and a deal with his parents. If I make a million dollars before I turn 18, he says, I don't have to go to college. I'm going to do it or die trying. He is currently continuing his education via homeschooling. While this story, on one hand, is a success story about how people can turn a check from grandma into a six-figure profit and use that money to start a business, on the other hand, this is a story about how public school is failing the students. This young man was not learning what he wanted to learn, nor was it being offered by the one-size-fits-all government school. He also wasn't able to find what he was looking for on sites like Khan Academy. Finman told Business Insider, I think of Boatangle as an online institution. I'm working on making Boatangle the best website on the web for someone to completely leave the status quo education system and learn completely through the web. When it comes to the free market, education, and starting a business, Finman has found out that you can create anything you want with no barriers on the internet. But not everyone wants to or has the capability to learn via computer, and many parents still feel pressured to send their children to a government-funded school. However, most parents don't have a choice of which government-funded school their children attend. On the surface, the question about school choice seems obvious. Should parents be allowed to choose which school their children attend? On the surface, it seems like the answer is obvious. Yes. A recent study by Troy University seems to confirm this. 
Highlights from the School Choice Works research shows that increasing the number and types of K-12 schools and empowering parents to decide which is best for their children will lead to better academic outcomes. A one-size-fits-all approach fails to provide the necessary flexibility to encourage experimentation and to meet the diverse education goals of parents and students. Evidence from school choice programs across the nation show that even small doses of school choice boost school system performance. The minutia comes about in the details of implementing school choice programs. The New Hampshire Supreme Court recently upheld a tax credit scholarship program that helps provide scholarships to children of low-income parents. The Franklin Center reports, in New Hampshire, business tax credits offer businesses a partial tax credit, 85%, for donations made to organizations which provide scholarships to low-income families defined as income less than 300% of the federal poverty line. It is then up to these families to determine what is best for them tuition charging public schools in nearby districts, homeschool, or tuition at a private school, including those which have religious affiliation and instruction. In other states, the money comes directly from the state or local government in the form of vouchers. Along with the voucher comes strings, meaning that once a private school, whether religious or not, receives the taxpayer money, the schools are then put further under the control of a government. Many people will look no further than these attached strings and decide at that point whether or not to support school choice. Some will look on only at the fact that taxpayer money is possibly being transferred to a religious private school and decide to oppose school choice. Few people look at the fact that government-run schooling is a wealth redistribution program. The National Center for Education Statistics estimates the current per-student expenditure to be $12,281 for the 2014-2015 school year. The source of this funding varies from state to state, though most states will use property, income, and or sales tax to fund government-run schools. Government-run schools, as with all things government-run, require that almost everyone pay for a program that not almost everyone uses. The only surefire way to have real school choice is to remove government from the equation. As long as people are being forced to pay for schools they don't want to use, there is no real choice.